Hello, dear colleagues. Today, in my presentation, I attempt to describe how the USSR image uh, appears in the past decades uh, popular culture, namely in Russian popular music uh, since 2010. I will try to propose a philosophical description of conditions and trends in popular culture rather than depict political rhetoric, finding historical true or ideological disputes over the USSR collapse. Famous musicians often talk ironically about the USSR. Some criticize the actual policy, some create fictional narrative. In songs and videos, as if the USSR didn't collapse, Lenin has a reason, became a mushroom soup, and so on and so forth. Musicians choose pseudonyms that refer to the Soviet epoch or use Soviet motifs to design album covers or video content. However, often these musicians does not directly relate to the Soviet era. Musicians do not openly associate themselves with the left ideology, and what is more, they did not live in the USSR at all. We couldn't deny that some musicians use the USSR image as the central theme for promoting ideological position or reflection of personal Soviet experience, something else. However, I've chosen some musicians for whom the Soviet Union could barely be the main topic. They refer eclectically to a broad range of past and present facts, seen in about everyday life, love, loneliness, and society strands without a particular accent on the USSR. Another interesting point related to those pop musicians is that they use such terms as post-true, post-irony, post-modernism in songs. This fact inclined me to choose for the presentation those musicians or musical groups that present themselves as post-ironical, post-ironical, post-modern, metamodern. Uh, of course, we couldn't describe all popular culture from this prospect. We easily find various examples of non-ironical cultural artifacts. On the other hand, I'll show on the slide, uh, this part of contemporary Russian pop culture is an influential one and plays a prominent role according to its popularity. So, in the presentation, I offer to analyze various strategies referring to the Soviet past as postmodern. The most cited postmodern indicators are the weakening of historicity, loss of faith, faith in meta-narratives, pastiche, irony, nostalgia, and a significant role in declaring the collapse of communist regimes played the end of ideology. I decided to combine the problem of studying post-Soviet postmodernism specifics and the reception of the Soviet past in Russia. Thus, when making a selection of songs, I was guided by the following criteria. The popularity of the artist, the intensity of references to the USSR, and the correspondence of the songs to the criteria of postmodernism. All the cases are briefly described there, and we have different types of references to the Soviet past that I try to articulate uh, clearly. To show how strategies of reception of the past have changed, firstly, we will analyze the song of Legalize, born in the USSR. The main character is a survivor from the Soviet Union, born during the Brezhnev stagnation. In the video, he is taken out of the time capsule by the future people. The Soviet man among them is represented as a hero. Uh, he has witnessed the change of several political regimes and experienced various manipulations of historical memory. The lyrics are a long lament on the rewriting of history and falsification. Uh, for him, historical truth is a value. People from the transhumanist future should study forgotten history lessons. The artist recalls the unfulfilled promises of a better future that was spread by the Soviet government. And the fictional story about the resurrection of a Koreanized Soviet man in the world of new technologies uh, could highlight the relevance and 
didactic potential of the Soviet experience. Soviet experience must be remembered to prevent these fatal errors. And uh, another Sina, Manetechka, Jan Sina, born 20 years later than Legalize, does not directly touch the USSR subject. But the song 90s is a demonstrative example uh, for my topic. Manetechka critically presents the problem of attitude to the history of the 90s for the generation born after it. She depicts how collective memory could work. She refers to the past as to pliant material. She points to the impossibility of finding the truth about the past. The Soviet epoch and 90s uh, have already managed to reassemble many times in the collective and individual memories of those who witnessed them. It, is, it has also reached young people as an inconsistent, colorful myth in which it is impossible to find the unbiased truth. This mythologization affected not only the memory of the USSR, but also a more recent period of Russian history, I mean 90s. Uh, the video and song of Menelichka are indicative of how she draws a critical distance between her generation and the myth of the past. She recollects tales about the 90s in one narrative. Street children, vodka, gasoline, raspberry colored jackets, widespread lawlessness. She consequently brings all to the point of absurdity, saying that she was conceived in the video shop while the bullets were flying around and you could hear barking and howling. Everybody was running naked, there was no electricity, only fighting for jeans and coke. The song mixes two prospects. The first one is from the warm house with sugar tea and girls' lyrics about sadness on her MacBook. And the other one is from the fictional 90s. Uh, people run naked and drink gasoline or vodka. She stresses that all in the song is just a fantasy. The next uh, she sings, the next verse resurrects it. Otherwise, everything is not so, and right now, all those people are gone. In the video 90s, Manetichka uses the central theme for from the most famous movie about the 90s and uh, 2000s. I mean, the Russian movie Brother. But now the main hero from the Brother, that was man, became a girl and all circumstances are too different. I guess the new generation needs to speak out about the past. Rewrite, replay, mix with present, render harmless, make it a personal or collective fantasy, or nostalgia for something that did not exist. So, stamps of collective and individual memory are played out in the song Paradenza by Little Big. The song's English text does not contain references to the Soviet Union, while video reproduces the Soviet-style hotel's cliches. The main character comes to the hotel for seniors to organize uh, cultural events. They cannot determine in what historical period it occurs. For example, a uh, scene from the clip in a dining room where a woman gives a large portion of mashed potatoes to the main character is extremely typical to the Soviet and post-Soviet conditions at all. Musicians themselves describe their project as critical. They wanted to make a world virus, and they have taken all the stereotypes about Russia as they said. Uh, all in all, this strategy attracts attention and commercial success. Uh, this uh, musical group uh, was Russia's entry to Eurovision, for example, this year. Uh, another musician, uh, Noise MC, uh, begins the video for the song Lenin Has a Reason with a replay of Lenin's words to the Red Army in uh, 1919. Soviet people there resemble zombies. Everywhere we see ideological uh, banners and cliches. However, further in the video, Lenin's hat become a nutritious nut for sale, and this nut is actively advertised. 
Lenin lies on the supermarket counter. Mushrooms grow from it. Canned cream soups are sold from these mushrooms, and uh, so on. And what I could say, this is not the most obvious method for criticizing the Soviet Union and Lenin's figure. It is impossible to define the message of satire or social criticism clearly. The artist creates his post-true narrative about the USSR with explicit criticism of totalitarianism, totalitarianism on the one hand. But on the other hand, the video can be considered separately from this critical statement. And it looks extremely postmodern. The strategy uh, of sincerity at absurdum can be found in the work of the group Buirak. The band plays classic post-punk that sounds like it could have been recorded in uh, 80s. At the same time, this group refers to the late Soviet experience not only through the sound but also through the lyrics and general aesthetics of the group. We can see it in the song Soviet Perfume. Uh, the band also has a song with the title Soviet Postmodern. In the, their music, irony, nostalgia, and retromania are combined through absurdity, allowing musicians to remain uh, at an ironic distance from singing about without uh, kissing, to, kissing to be sincere. The artists, artists seen that the triple portion of Soviet perfume plays many roles in a man's life. If you use it, it it as a perfume, then there is no rest from women. There is a long queue. But when men drink it instead of alcohol, his wife runs away from him. The most crucial property of perfume is that it fills with hope. So individual memory of the past is fixed, fixed on the Soviet perfume based on parts of the collective memory of older generation who uh, had life in the Soviet Union. The artist, artists themselves consciously turn to the Soviet experience to find element, elements for songs that can be mixed with personal experience of living in the Russian present. And here, Soviet perfume becomes a symbol of the past, which can be resurrected. The song's lyrics know that it has a nostalgic smell. The Soviet past spirit hovers in the present Russian air, playing with the myths of memory musicians, romanticize the era in which they lived by moving this symbol uh, to the present. And this ironic atmosphere in the band is enhanced uh, because it is performed by 20 years old young men. So that perfume becomes a detached image from the place and time to describe the experience uh, of these young people. We can find utopian motifs in the works of the Komsomotsk. Uh, the Soviet Union becomes a utopian place for young artists non place, a place that never was. In an interview, one member of the group explained her choice, her choice of a name. And what she said, Komsomolsk is not the name of a specific city, but something more general. One day I found the Soviet magazine Crocodile. There was a painted red sheep, young man with healthy and handsome faces, stand on the deck, and there were the names of the cities they are going to build. It included Komsomolsk on Amur. Of course, Komsomolsk was built mainly by convicts, but the idea that young people from Moscow are rushing to the Far East to build new cities and new uh, lives is wonderful. It uh, has utopian nature, but uh, it's still extremely uh, extremely uh, wonderful, yeah. Uh, as she said, uh, we could call ourselves Chivangur, uh, she said, but that was too much. 
the fantasy by Komsomolsk refers either to some abstract city or to a particular town, Moscow, where the action of the song takes place. The covers of Komsomolsk recordings uh, feature colleges from different eras with Soviet trams, pics of the Moscow subway. However, the black and white eyes on the girls' faces stress the fictional character of this narrative. Member of the group uh, using the fantasy uh, use the fantasy uh, that can be found anywhere. However, the search for their their place in history and modernity in the song Where Are We Now begins in the Soviet Rumochne, I mean the bar. Here the generalized Soviet becomes the non place. Uh, and uh, it is a starting point for building relationships between the present and uh, the future. In the video, we find busts of Soviet leaders, the music of Soviet singer Maya Kristalinska, and interestingly, in the last part of the clip, a series of movements ends at the starting point. The two girls are again waitresses in a bar, as if nothing has happened around them since the beginning. And all the adventures were a dream, just a dream. As a topological coordinate of Komsomolsk, we could define a ghostly Soviet past, which never existed in reality which has never experienced by these young people, but which simultaneously creates the effect of déjà vu. It was important for me to show the different shades of this generation's attitude to the Soviet Union. I've chosen the most prominent and vivid examples. Of course, they are not the only ones on the stage. Young people can ironically aestheticize various everyday cliches, uh, as it does Little Big uh, in Faradenza, or bring them to the point of absurdity and post-irony, as Slava says does, or like Magnetichka, create own version of events, rewrite history as you want, um, if the past itself is already, is already hidden behind the veil of myths. Uh, musicians also can use the USSR for social and political criticism with exaggerated and sharp metaphors, as Noise MC does in video Lenin has a reason. Or they find a loophole in the past and create a utopian space as it was done by Komsomolsk. It cannot be said that the music industry has completely stopped producing politically charged music uh, that enormously appeals to the USSR. I wanted to define the trends and moods in the culture after 2010s to show that Soviet symbols are detached from their signifiers and Soviet symbols, detached symbols, became a part of uh, different pop culture's eclectic art strategies. Uh, so. Uh, thank you for this presentation about uh, postmodernism, uh, post-Soviet Russian songs. Yeah, thank you.